today I am adding dividers to my finger jointed tray model. In this design I am using my new and improved finger jointed tray from my previous video. So adding dividers to this tray along the length axis is relatively easy. There are three things that I'm going to need to do to accomplish this task. I'm going to need to cut holes along the front and back panels where the dividers will have tabs insert into those panels. I also need to cut holes in the bottom panel for the bottom tabs from the dividers. And finally, I need to actually create the dividers. Before I modify the model, I will create a couple of new parameters. The first parameter that I create, I will call L dividers. This parameter will be used for me to define how many dividers I want to add along the length axis of the box. The second parameter I will call L compartments, and this will really just be a convenience parameter that will be equal to the number of dividers plus one. Now, I need to determine the easiest way to create the holes in the panels and create the dividers. Because I want to make sure that this model does not break in the future, I want to avoid operations that might be prone to warnings or errors when I change the number of dividers or the parameters that drive the dimensions of the tray. One way to create the holes in the front, back, and bottom would be to create the dividers and then use the combine operation from the modify menu to cut the corresponding holes in those panels. However, the combine operation, what I've learned, is dependent on the target and tool bodies always existing. So if I use the combine operation to cut a hole in a panel using a body such as a divider, that may disappear in the future, then when I change the number of dividers, the model will most likely break. So I want to avoid that situation. One easy way to create these dividers and holes is to take advantage of the operations that already exist in this model. If I step back in the timeline to the beginning and walk through the operations, I see that I created a sketch and extruded the bottom panel. I then created another sketch and drew the front and back notches in that bottom panel. And then I repeated the same thing along the left and right sides of the bottom panel. Now to create those notches, I used a rectangular pattern. And for the second direction, I used the number two to define the number of times that this pattern was repeated. So two, one for the left and one for the right. So looking at this, if I add the number of dividers to that value of two, I can easily see that there will be holes cut along the bottom panel aligned to the notches that I had already cut along the edges and they will be spaced equally along the distance of the panel. So I'll hit OK, and that's one operation done. With those holes cut, I can step forward in my timeline. I can see that I performed a similar operation along the front panel when I created the notches along the height axis. So if I modify that rectangular pattern and also add the number of dividers, I can see those holes also cut in the panel. Finally, if I look at the left panel, I can see that my dividers will be the same shape as the left panel, so I can easily modify the rectangular pattern that I used to create the right panel. Again, add the number of dividers, and very quickly I have dividers along the entire length of the tray that are equally spaced and all of the holes are cut and if I change the number of dividers or change the dimensions of the box everything will still work and I don't have to worry about operations breaking accidentally. Now this will probably break if I make the box 
too small and um, have too many dividers so the thickness of all of the dividers exceed the length or the width of the box. I haven't actually tested that, but I'm assuming that that will create some issues. But that's a really easy situation to avoid. So this will only work for dividers that I want to space equally along the length of the tray, but it's a good start for many projects. So this was a really quick video, and uh, I hope it showed you an easy way to add dividers to your projects. In my next video, I will be adding dividers along the width axis of the tray, and that will take a little bit more creative thinking to make sure that I can build the model in a way that does not break as I change the number of dividers in both dimensions or in both directions. I hope this was useful. Please leave any feedback or criticism in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.